A vast ye all hand hoy. Okay, I'm, I'm not doing this pirate talk. Today, we're reviewing a game of Powder and Cannon Sails and Seas, reliving the good old days of the Caribbean where everything was owned by Europeans. Mac Cheese to host, and today we're reviewing Buccaneers. Buccaneers is set in 1790, well after the golden age of piracy. You initially start the game as a prominent captain loyal to the British Empire, but after capturing a port town and celebrating at a tavern, you black out and are then sent to a jailhouse by this guy called Diego Salazar, whose goal it is to do pirate stuff, I guess. After breaking out, you're allowed to align yourself with four factions in the Caribbean. You can attempt to win back the trust of the British Empire or fight for Spain, France, or the Buccaneers League, basically the pirates, with the goal of stopping Diego Salazar, who I'm, I'm pretty sure is evil and bad. No matter what faction you choose, you can rest assured that it is an entirely pointless decision, as all it really does is grant you a faction-specific buff, none of which are really noticeable at all. None of these factions have any real flavor to them, and the story in mission stay the exact same regardless of what you choose. And while we're talking about flavor, it's pretty stupid to have the pirate faction be called the Buccaneers League because joining an organized organization kind of defeats the purpose of being a pirate. The story overall is nothing to write home about. Things kind of happen, and then you beat the game, you finish it, the game gives you a limp-wristed pat on the back, and th that's kind of it. That being said, it's better than nothing. After all, the game would get old a lot faster without anything to really work for, so credit where that's due, I guess. All you really have to know is you're trying to beat this guy named Diego. While there is a main story, players are incentivized to complete side missions to earn money and experience points, the latter of which allows them to access new skills on the skill tree. One way to play the game is as a merchant. The game has three types of goods that can be bought and sold, basic goods being the cheapest, luxury goods being mid-range, and exotic goods being the most expensive, but yielding the greatest profit margins. Towns will import and export specific goods. This means you'll have to move from town to town to sell items at the best price points. Honestly, it's a pretty dull way to play the game, even with the random combat encounters that try to break the monotony. Like, what you see here, basically 99% of all merchant gameplay. Just watching a ship move across a map. Despite its oversimplicity, it's also weirdly unstreamlined. I feel like in any other game, there'd be a list that would tell you which towns are buying and selling certain products at the best prices, making it easier to find your next location, which really isn't the case for this game. This means clicking on each individual port on the map just to find where the best spot to unload your goods are. The design is frankly stupid. A little more exciting is Bounty hunting, fighting other nation ships for cash and XP. Not as profitable as trading, but allows you to level up fast. You can also go to a governor or tavern keeper for information on treasure fleets, which carry valuable goods that can be confiscated and sold. You can also work with smugglers to sneak goods into enemy ports for cash. I didn't really bother with the treasure fleets or the smuggler missions, because the merchant playstyle was just a much better source of income, allowing you to get more money at a faster rate with less hassle. And in case you haven't noticed, the side missions are less so actual side missions than they are just radiant quests like what you'd find from Fallout 4. Here's an enemy, defeat them. Whether you're actively looking for ships to sink or just trying to trade, combat is an inevitability. Ineb inevitability. So let's talk about the combat of the game, the real meat. Ships, with some exception, will have access to three types of munitions. Normal cannonballs will do damage to the ship itself to sink it. Grape shot is good at taking out enemy crew members, and chain shot will rip apart enemy sails, immobilizing the target and eventually allowing you to board their ship. No matter the munitions you use, naval combat is incredibly boring. It's just too slow paced to be fun. After firing a volley, you have to wait like 10 or 20 seconds for the cannons to reload with the only other thing to do in the meantime is to just circle the other ship you're trying to sink. Like this is it man. This is, this is, this is naval combat at its peak, man. And this is why I opted to use Chain Shot pretty much exclusively. You're able to execute boarding battles in this game, and they're just so much more engaging than naval combat. It's really just a matter of killing the other side until they surrender. Really nothing much to it, it, it it's pretty linear. But I have some complaints about it because, of course I do. For one, boarding the ship itself will often cause the game to completely glitch out as the ships literally just phase right through each other. And like, like, this is unacceptable. A glitch like this should not be so easy to trigger. It, sh it really shouldn't even be in this game. Melee combat can feel very unresponsive at times. There'll be moments where you'll be right in front of the guy you're trying to kill, slashing all crazily. A lot of times it really doesn't feel like they have much of a reaction, but sometimes you're straight up not even doing any damage to them despite seemingly being in range. So it doesn't just feel unsatisfying, it's 
that's just downright unfair. On the topic of uh, ranged weapons, you can't change them while reloading, which is a huge problem, especially since a lot of the weapons in the game take a considerable amount of time to load. Weapons such as the blunderbuss and knockgun take usually an upwards of 10 seconds to do so, making such weapons practically unusable as they effectively remove you from the battle for a significant amount of time. And it really sucks because this is an era with really interesting weaponry, and the game pretty much disqualifies the use of most of these weapons because of their poor implementation. The game pretty much locks you into using one specific type of weapon, that being the pepper box pistols. The game lets you dual wield them, and they have the highest capacity in the game, holding four shots each that can be fired in succession. And as you fire one independently, the other can be reloaded somehow. I really don't know how that works, but okay. And this makes every other weapon in the game entirely pointless, because having that consistent stream of ammo is really what's gonna win your battles. And again, it's a really disappointing thing that all the diversity of the firearms in this era, it's all for naught because they're just so unbalanced. Other than that, I only ever found myself using the standard musket for engaging at long ranges. The lack of cover gets really annoying as well, especially when there's like five people aiming and firing at you, and there's really nothing you can do about it. And yet, another glitch I have to mention is how when the combat is finished and you zoom out from first person to third person ship view, there's like two seconds where you can still see your character's arms, so it just looks really weird, as if you're like flying outside of the ship. It really just makes the game feel unpolished, and to be fair, it is. And while we're on the topic of unpolishedness, you can literally phase through islands. They may as well not even be there. Well, why, why is this a thing? Why is this in your game? I don't understand it. As time goes on, you can add more ships to your fleet, up to four, and enemies will in turn bulk up as well. It doesn't make the battles feel more epic or grand, it just makes the battles longer and more tedious. Battles essentially just become mosh pits where everyone's just kind of doing their own thing. It makes it feel less like a naval battle and more like a series of 1v1s. Adding to the annoyance, if an allied ship gets boarded, you literally can't do anything to assist them. You have to wait for them to win or lose in order to continue the battle. Once more, adding to the tediousness. It wasn't long before I was just begging for any sort of auto-resolve feature, which really shouldn't be the case in a game like this. Yet uh, another thing to note is how it's pretty much impossible to lose during the beginning of the game, the, the first few hours. What I noticed is there's a delay between when your projectiles are fired to when they meet their target, meaning you'll have to lead your shots effectively if you want to hit anything. You can do this, but the enemy AI hasn't been programmed to do so, meaning that as long as you have some distance between you and the enemy ship, they will miss every single time they try to fire at you. The only reason this stops being an issue is because as you progress, enemy ships get bigger and thus get more cannons, meaning that by virtue of having bigger volleys, they can actually hit you and you actually have to worry about damage. This is an insanely stupid design flaw to overlook, and it makes the first few hours of the game completely pointless. After all, there's really no point to playing a game if you can't lose. I like winning, who doesn't? But I, I want it to be a hard-earned W. Naval combat and boarding battles get old really fast. They're boring and each battle feels the complete same with no reason or possibility to develop or change up strategies. Unless you count bigger ship equals more gun and more gun equals more good as a strategy, the only other type of combat are port assaults. When you've leveled up enough, you can unlock a skill that allows you to assault and occupy a port and claim it for your faction. You take out the ships defending the town, then you destroy the fort on it, and then you begin the land assault. It's a pretty linear kind of thing. Enemies charge at you and you fight your way to the fort. It's very linear and there's very few variations of the ports. So much like every other aspect of the game, it gets repetitive fast. Other than that, it's largely unnoteworthy, save for the weird invisible walls that the game will put around the map for no reason at all. Honestly, I probably would have tried to go for a complete map conquest, but the whole thing got tedious pretty quickly, especially during the initial naval assault. The thing is, once you beat the ships, you also have to destroy the fort on land, except what that consists of is circling the thing for what feels like ages, firing cannonball after cannonball with seemingly no effect. Suffice to say, shooting at a stationary target that can't really fight back until it finally falls isn't that fun. Frankly, it's pointless. I basically won the battle. There's no point in elongating it, but that's just what the game does. When the combat is mercifully said and done, you can dock at a town to repair your ship, replenish crew, and buy arms. You can also upgrade your ship, which is probably the only part of the game I can say is actually 
actually kind of good because it's the only time the game shows a semblance of death. You can replace your cannons, but each of the cannons have advantages and disadvantages to One them. cannon might be powerful, but it can't use certain munitions. Another cannon might have more range, but not pack as much of a punch. You can also upgrade the hull, sail, and crew as well. This is the only time I found any appreciation for the game because, oh my god, you actually have to put thought into it so you can tailor your ship towards your play style. All in all, I feel like the core gameplay and mechanics are there, but it's really not enough to create a finished product. The game takes its bare bones mechanics and stretches them as thin as possible in lieu of actually creating depth or content. Personally, I would have loved to see actual side missions with their own storylines. I would love to see more emphasis on actual characters. I would have really loved for factions to have personalities so that I can actually feel as though I was a part of these factions. I would have loved to see more meaningful interactions with crewmates, perhaps some random pop-up events as you sail around the map. Really just anything to give this game more life or complexity, something to just diversify the gameplay. Before we finish things off, I want to quick talk about the VR mode that is actually a thing that's offered here. It is absolutely nothing to write home about. Pretty much everything plays out the same as it would playing the game on a flat screen. But if I'm gonna be honest, the VR mode honestly makes this game so much worse. The problem is, when 90% of a game is just sitting around and waiting for things to happen, it's not gonna lend itself well to a VR space. VR games need to be engaging enough for the player to lose themselves in, and if that really isn't accomplished, you kind of failed at making a VR game. You need to make the player feel like they're a part of this game world, and not like they're just sitting in the middle of their dark room wearing a concrete block. The only thing I can really remark about is probably the guns. It's kind of what attracted me to the game in the first place. There really aren't a lot of VR games that do muskets, so this seemed like the game to try. You have to take your powder flask and ball from your belt and drop them in the barrel, but no, actually grabbing these items feels unnatural. The game is overly specific as to where you actually have to grab, meaning that you'll have to look down to make sure that you're grabbing in the picture-perfect spot that the game expects from you. It takes away a lot of the fun from using these weapons. Not that it really matters though, because one of the skill unlocks that's exclusive to the VR mode is that after firing, you can just throw your weapon away, to which it will then respawn loaded in your holsters, completely negating the need to reload, and in my opinion, taking away the appeal of these unique reloading mechanics. Mind you, this doesn't even work half the time, as weapons would constantly spawn in half loaded or completely empty. Again, a very mwah, finely crafted game. And you've probably noticed a sort of line coming out of the gun, as you've probably probably guess this is meant to help the player aim, which, while welcome to some, I didn't want it. I wanted to turn it off so I could aim as one would usually aim. But the game doesn't let you do that, so yet another disappointment, I guess. To sum up the VR mode, it is a lazily tacked on addition. It's not more immersive or exciting. In fact, I'd say it's less so. It's really just there so the developers could say, ooh, look at us, we made a pirate game in VR. Nothing more than a cheap marketing gimmick, don't fall for it. The game, all in all, feels like an asset flip. Bare bones and boring boring gameplay with no depth whatsoever, painfully obvious glitches, and I mean the game literally uses pre-made assets. I give Buccaneers a 3 out of 10 and I do not recommend it to anyone whatsoever. It doesn't matter the price, it doesn't matter how cheap it is, I don't care man, I don't have anything else to say. Oh, would you look at that, despite having prematurely abandoned their game, the developers are already advertising their next project on the Buccaneers store page. Yeah, I'm sure you people will get very far in this industry. I don't have anything else to say other than I'd rather play a naval battle in Rome 2 Total War. Yes, I really went there, and yes, I, I really mean it. But that's a review for Buccaneers. If you liked the video, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out in any of the new video game or movie reviews. Other than that, follow the Twitter, join the Discord. This is Mac Chista Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one. Hero.